Welcome to our YouTube channel where wisdom meets inspiration. In this channel, we share valuable insights to help you become the best version of yourself. Our content is designed to uplift your spirit and enrich your life. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay connected with this incredible journey. Click the subscribe button below. Americans have a way of putting profound things in a very simple way. I mean, uh, if you see this, don't be misled by the examples which he uses. That is saying something superficial, actually saying something very interesting. With regard to the problem which I put forward, meaning versus pleasure. What he is saying is, he was training for a tennis tournament, a squash tournament, and he put himself on a health food diet. Uh, with the promise that after the tournament is over, he will indulge himself and buy his favorite junk food and treat himself to the junk food. And so what he did was, so what he did was, after the tournament was over, he went to the McDonald's and he ordered a whole tray full of whatever junk food, you know, uh, very heavy oily stuff. And he with great joy, he carried it to the table and he sat down and then he looked at it and he said, I had no desire for it at all. And he said, because he's a psychologist, he was puzzled by this. He said, I wanted this. Now I don't want it. I was dreaming about it when I was training so hard for one month. I was dreaming about this, that I will one day, just after this is over, really indulge myself. Now when it's in front of me, I don't want it. Then he thought, why? And immediately got the answer. The answer is, the health food which he had been taking for over a month. He said, because of that, I found the benefit. I feel energetic. I feel light. I feel nice. And I know the moment I eat this, I'll feel heavy and uneasy. And I have to take antacids or whatever. And now I've gotten used to that. I don't want to give that up. That's healthy and tasty. And then he sort of generated this thing. He said, basically, our approach to life has these four possibilities. Then we can immediately see which, which, which option we have taken up. And we are predominantly one or the other, but at different times in our life, we go through all of these four. What are they? If you go to the, um, the second quadrant up there, to the right, hedonism, where, like junk food, which is very tasty now, but unhealthy in the long run, or in the very short run also. So, uh, and he says, those who go in for uh, present pleasure, I've got this assignment, I'll do it later. Let me play computer games. Uh, so I push it back. Uh, I have got this uh, uh, deadline to meet. I'll work in the last, you know, the, the examination is there. So I'll do an all night, what do you, do you still call it, all nighters? So, uh, night out. Uh, so I, I, I'll do that before the examination. Two or three days, I ought to be able to man manage it. Instead of working now. So, hedonism, pleasure oriented. Uh, you, you go for present benefit uh, and future detriment. Future detriment, present benefit. Let me have my shot of pleasure right now. The opposite is something which many people here would identify with is uh, future benefit but present detriment. In the sense that, like health food, it's, it's not tasty. I remember I was sitting... Uh, having food with some monks um, and there was something from a different country, a health food, something that, a, a, a bottle of something, some kind of food, biscuits or something and he said it's healthy and it's got these vitamins and everything and then one Swami said, what it means it's not tasty. <laughs> so often it's like that and uh, these people, they say that, okay, let me work very hard for my joint entrance examination, I'll crack it, then I'll relax. But once you crack that and you come to IIT Kanpur, as you know, not much chance of relaxation at all. <laughs> you are barely able to keep your nose above the water. You know, this assignment, that ex examination, uh, the <laughs> these results, and so on. Just somehow struggling to stay afloat. Don't think it's going to change the moment you get a big fat salary packet, you know. You complete your PhD or your MTech or your BTech and go and take a big job. It's not like that. We're going to give you a big fat salary package. They're going to get everything out of you also. So there also, it will go on like that. There you think that maybe when I reach that level, it will be, it'll get better. I'll be very relaxed and I'll enjoy myself. So you go from one goal to another goal, all in the future, and you get those benefits. But 
but this is important at no point in time are you happy not before not now and as you see the point, plot the points of time you're expecting a future happiness the idea of it will arrive the arriving model I will arrive at happiness so that's the rat race the problem with the rat race is if you, even if you win the rat race you're still a, a rat <laughs> and the uh, and the first quadrant is the worst and there are so many people there a nihilist uh, where like stale food it tastes bad and it's unhealthy in the same way there are people who are unhappy at present and they have no particular goal they're working towards a large number of people it happens often at mid-career young people here won't understand that because you have got something to look forward to but at mid-career or middle age it suddenly happens that I'm not happy and I also realize nothing very great is going to happen in my life anymore and then you feel you know the f today is not good and tomorrow looks worse so uh, that is the nihilist position and many people come to this Seligman calls it a kind of lear uh, learned helplessness learned helplessness there was an experiment they conducted where they put rats one group of rats was given electric shocks mild shocks so don't be don't feel bad for the rats but it must have hurt because they had a little re lever which they could press and the shocks would shut off and another group was given random shocks with no lever there's nothing that they could do to stop the shocks later on when the groups were mixed and put in another cage where they were given shocks and the lever was there or some other or there was the cage walls where the barriers were open so they could jump out the first group which n knew that they could overcome the pain of the shocks they found out that and they jumped out and the rats in the second group though they could have jumped out they did not they went they just stayed there shivering and suffering so this nihilist group it's a kind that who have given up hope there's no happiness in the future and obviously there's no happiness now and you'd say why would anybody want to be there nobody wants to be there but many people do end up being there and it's good that we we can focus on that and see that we don't end up being there and when we do get that kind of feeling we should pull ourselves out of it the third one uh, the the last quadrant fourth quadrant that's the purpose of this whole exercise what Tal Ben Shahar says she says that both of these uh, the, all of these uh, the nihilist and the rat racer and the hedonist all of them have a conceptual mistake the mistake what is the mistake she says one day a young student in Harvard University she came to him and said look I have attended your course but my question remains is it better to be happy now or happy in the future and Tal Ben Shah said that very question illustrates the problem the right question to ask is how can I be happy now and in the future how can I be happy now and in the future in Vedanta uh, we talk about three qualities sattva rajas and tamas tamas is the quality of darkness heaviness laziness inertia rajas is the quality of dynamism desire activity sattva is the quality of quality of lightness of peace of serenity of calm activity now if you put this sattva rajas tamas here you will find the nihilist will immediately fit into the Thomas model in Bhagavad Gita description of Sukha happiness happiness of a tamasic person this is the happiness of a tamasic person is you know that person is prone to laziness to to depression to to darkness in in life so that is the nihilistic model the hedonistic model would come somewhere between the hedonistic model and the rat racer would come somewhere in the rajasic uh, category where I want pleasure if there's a little bit of self-control okay I want more pleasure in the future I'll sacrifice my present happiness and work hard towards that so it becomes a rat racer if there's less self-control but I want that pleasure he goes for immediate uh, benefit but sacrifices future uh, benefits whereas happiness model would correspond to the sattvic person the sattvic person knows what is good for himself or herself and for others what is good now and in the future and 
has managed to get the habit of, as Tal Ben Shah did, of health food. You know, enjoys that health food. Enjoys that health food. Not in the sense that it will make me happy later. I am happy right now. It, I feel good. I remember there was a Swami in Deoghar, in the Ramakrishna Mission where I joined. And every day he would take this glass of some green, like, sherbet, you know. And none of the others got it. And one of the little kids was curious. I said, it looks delicious. And only the Swami, head Swami gets it. Nobody else gets it. And so he would stare at it. And he was in class 5 or 6, 10 years old. And the Swami one day said in Bengali, Khabi, do you khabi? Do you want it? He said, yes. And took a little sip. It was neem juice. So he made a face like this and he ran away. Now that, that, that it's extremely bitter. But that Swami enjoys it. And the little kid saw the expression in the Swami's face and thought it must be very delicious. But you can uh, get to enjoy that which is good for you. Become Swami Vivekananda's messenger. Share the video with three of your friends.